Hi guys, Dr. Lando. I'm going to do a video on laws of thermodynamics as it relates to biology in our class. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and start with the first law of thermodynamics, and that law is called the law of conservation of energy. And it is defined as energy is neither created nor destroyed, only converted. So here's a little picture similar to what I drew in class on the board. So in case you couldn't quite follow it then, you can hopefully follow it now. You can always pause this and rewind, of course, which you can't do in class. Okay, so uh, we're going to start here with the sun. The sun is our ultimate source of energy here on this planet. So uh, from the sun comes photons, little packets of energy, and also heat. And those photons are used, are used uh, by plants. And plants will do photosynthesis. And I know we haven't talked about photosynthesis yet, but you just have to believe me that during photosynthesis the plant is using energy to make glucose, which it might use for energy, or if it has a lot of it, like a potato would, a lot of glucose, it's going to store that as starch. Remember, starch is just a large chain of glucose. Glucose after glucose after glucose, right? And um, so the glucose going from a small unit, lots of small units, to a more organized structure, starch, and you can tell that we went from we were actually building something, that should remind you of a particular type of reaction that we talked about or an adjective we used for reactions, and that is endergonic. Okay. So this reaction is endergonic. That glucose, a bunch of glucoses, I did glucose times a lot is what that is, uh, to make a starch. So we put energy in. Where did the energy come from? From the sun uh, it initially. And then uh, the plant was able to um, take glucose and turn it into starch. And we will cover all those details when we get to photosynthesis. So just need you to accept that right now. Okay, so there's the sweet potato and uh, the starch is in the sweet potato. And this, this feller here, he's hungry. So he eats the sweet potato Okay, and he's happy because sweet potatoes are yummy. And so the starch uh, in this uh, fellow's stomach is broken down into glucose, and then that glucose is used to make ATP, right? And so um, and so the, the starch, going from a complex structure to less complex structure of all these individual glucoses, and and then uh, the energy from the glucose, the bonds in the glucose being used to make ATP, you can see that we're breaking down the starch and we are releasing energy in the form of ATP. So when we are we're breaking things down and releasing energy, that should remind you of the uh, adjective we used for reactions, exergonic. So that's exergonic because energy is released and a product has been broke down, a reactant has been broke down. Okay, so now this guy has a bunch of ATP, so he's ready to go do work. So you can see I have him running, he has his little tennis shoes on here, and he's sweating. Okay, so he's using the ATP and breaking it down. Okay, remember ATP? Just as a reminder, not ATP to be used, it will be broken down into ADP, and a phosphate will come off, and you'll get that energy that is needed to to move. So in this, you know, for running, it's the energy actually goes to the 
parts of the within the muscle cell to move the muscle cell and which eventually in turn moves the entire muscle which moves the body and so that's where that energy goes and then we can recycle that ADP by putting a phosphate back on and we will get the ATP okay. so that's always just a good thing to remember this recyclable nature of ATP okay so I just want you to remember the point of this little illustration is that we are conserving energy. The energy never was was uh, lost or created. It was just converted. It was converted from photons to glucose to starch, back to glucose to ATP, uh, all along the way, um, not being created or destroyed, just being converted. We do have to remember that all along the way, no energy trans, uh, transformation is 100% efficient, that some of that energy will always be lost to heat. And that's probably easiest to illustrate when you think about when you go running and you've got a lot of heat build up and you begin sweating. Um, or think about in a greenhouse, how nice and warm it is in a greenhouse, not just because they keep it that way, but because all the plants that are going through photosynthesis are also producing some heat. Okay, now the second law of thermodynamics as it relates to biology, and I title this one, Entropy Happens. So we're always battling entropy. Entropy, remember, is a measure of disorder in a system. Okay. Disorder in a system. So just a little fact here about entropy. Any system without an energy supply will tend toward disorder. So we have to have a constant infusion of energy to maintain that order. Everything from our small biomolecules up to the complexity of the biosphere has to have energy put into it to maintain that order. If the energy should stop, disorder would reign. It's just like the analogy I gave for you know, keeping your house clean. If you don't put the energy in, it doesn't stay clean. And that is exactly what happens in biological systems. So here's just a little picture that I drew. Here's some amino acids that are floating around. They are separate. You could say that this is, this is much more disorganized here on this side of the equation. Okay. They are all floating around aimlessly until uh, a process comes along to organize them. And that process will require ATP. It requires energy to bind those amino acids together to make those peptide bonds join the amino acids to make the protein. Okay, so if we're putting energy in, just as a reminder, energy in, we're building something endergonic. That's an endergonic reaction. And, and, and again, entropy will continue to happen unless there's a continuous supply of energy to, to thwart it. And that continuous energy supply is here in this picture, comes from ATP. And if you go back to our previous law, you see that all the ATP, its energy, all originates from the sun. So as long as the sun is shining, we'll all have our ATP. All right, if you have any questions, um, feel free to email me or call me. Thanks.